Hi, in this session I'm going to go through some basics and tips on how to create a cross-functional flowchart or a swim lane. It's also known as a swim lane. And this is done in Visio 2010. And so when you open up Visio 2010, you go File New, you get to choose a template. And you can go into the flowchart template, and this will bring up a basic flowchart or a cross-functional flowchart. And I can click on that or double-click it. We'll bring up a swim lane template with two sw two lanes and basically uh, one lane for a title and a smaller one for, I think that's phase. That looks like phase, yes. Let me go ahead and uh, zoom out. So in terms of creating a swim lane, you can either start off with the orientation of a portrait orientation where it's kind of horizontal. So in terms of the orientation, you can either start out with it in landscape mode or you can have it in orientation mode. So one of the first decisions you probably think about making is whether you want to have your swim lanes horizontally spread out or vertically. And so to change that, you can go up to cross-functional flowchart and either click the orientation. This is set to horizontal or you can set it to vertical. And also you can set up your your page orientation, you can go under design and go into page orientation. It's in landscape mode. Let's say I wanted to have that in portrait mode. It'll set that up in portrait mode. You can see that it's kind of off to two pages, but let me, if I bring it up here, it'll be one page and go and bring it up here. It'll be one page and then go ahead and fit into view here. So that's how you can kind of adjust it, whether or not you like it to have it in a uh, portrait or landscape, but I prefer landscape. So I'm going to work in landscape. I'm going to change this back to the horizontal. Let me bring this back up here and then go ahead and click on fit the page and I'll have this. Let me go ahead and spread this back out. So it depends on, on how you like the orientation of your specific swim lane. So also with swim lanes you may get just the default of two swim lanes. So you, you can add additional swim lanes in different ways. You can go into the stencils, you can go into if you've already gotten quick shapes or if you got the cross-functional uh, flowchart shapes here you can add it either way I can add that here this will bound it in there and make it fit and go back into quick shapes I like to see the rest of the shapes I've got here that's one way to do it is bring it in from the stencil another way to do it is to go into the cross-functional flowchart tab and just click add the swim lane and the third way you can do it is press control and just select one of the swim lanes you can see the the pointers to add it a little plus next to it and I can just drag a, another swim lane down and it's going to drag it down there. So there's a couple ways you can add additional swim lanes on there. So what if you wanted to add pages? Let's say we have a one page here, we have a process or flow here uh, that's going to be in a particular phase. You can see that that's phase here. We want to add another one. So if we click on insert page, you'll notice that it doesn't bring over the swim lanes. In order to have it bring over swim lanes, you just need to go under the cross-functional flowchart tab and just click page. And it's going to click add another page. Let me go ahead and delete this page. It's going to add another page here and basically just copy over those swim lanes. So that's kind of nice if you've already set up some titles here for the different functions and it just copies that over. Uh, another thing you might want to also do is, let's say there's this one phase here, instead of having multiple phases, you have a flow that has different phases, but it could fit on one page. You didn't want to have it on two pages. You can bring over a separated line and just put it in here, and maybe most of it is going to be uh, there. Maybe this is one third of it. Now, if you wanted to Visio to kind of decide for you, let me go ahead and Control Z to undo that. If you want a Visio to kind of decide for you where to put it, you can just click on the separator uh, icon here, the, the command here under the cross-functional flowchart. It will add the first one in the middle, and depending on where you click, so if you can see it's kind of highlighted here, depending on where you click, it'll kind of separate it in half again. So if I clicked in here, it's going to put the separator in the middle, and if I clicked over here, whoops, let me go ahead and select here, you can see now it's highlighted a little bit and click on the separator. It has divided that part in half. So that's if you want to have different phases. I don't want that. I'm just, just going ahead and press Control Z to undo these. I just want to have one big, uh, one big swim lane un, unbroken, unseparated in this example. So that's that's there's two ways you can add a separator, and that's one via the stencil and one via the ribbon.
So what about labels? If we have our labels here, well, it's, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is just go ahead and click on the label here and just type something. Let's say this is sales and this is finance. This maybe would service. And let me go ahead and get down here a little bit. Maybe this is manufacturing. And we'll call this engineering. OK. And go ahead and I'm just going to fit into view here and click outside. So this has added it here. And you notice that it really has not added it here because we haven't uh, taken it from this page. So if I, select, if I clicked on page one, and I click on this page, you'll notice now it's added it. So, so good rule of thumb, before you go off and create additional pages of your swim lanes, make sure if you want to have, you're pretty set with the labels for the swim lanes, you created it first, and then you go into page to add new pages. Now, what about the sizing? Well, you can change the sizing of the swim lanes, and that also. So you can see that we changed it here. It didn't really change here. So that's another good tip also is if you decide that one particular lane should be bigger, you change it in the first page before adding new pages. So something to consider when we change the, the swim lane width here, you'll notice if I click on page and it added a new page, it didn't adjust for that. So just something to take note of if you are adjusting the links. Let me go ahead and undo that. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this and delete page two. Actually, I think that's the same, right? Yeah. So I'll go ahead and keep this one. And so that's another thing that you need to consider. Uh, one more thing is styles. Let's say that we have these different styles that are available uh, right here under the cross-functional uh, flowchart tab. So there's some predefined styles if you like want to choose that. If you we have another style where it kind of just makes it a little bit lighter, removes that particular border there, or you can have the borders kind of curve like this. So there's a lot of different styles, but let's see, there's about 12 styles here that you can choose from, but I'm just going to go and stick with this default style for now. So let's see if I wanted to change this back into a uniform length. I think, I, I believe by default, the height of the swim lanes are uh, 1.25 inches. So I can just go ahead and select this here and bring it up to where until it says 1.25 here. And so that's set there. So let's set it back. So now let's get into shapes. So basically it's pretty easy to, when you think about it to put shapes into the flow chart. And so one, of, one rule of thumb is what I like to do first is kind of set up my shapes first. Let's say that there's a process here in sales and then there's something that goes on to finance and there's a decision made at service and manufacturing's got another process and let's see there's a there's some documentation that's done at finance and there is a, another process that's done in engineering. So I, I guess once you lay out the shapes then we can start to put the connections together. And so we can go ahead and click our connector tool here and I can start to make connections here. So what, what you notice that if you start to make connections, let me go ahead and uh, start to make some connections here. Uh, let's see, and then make this here, and then I'll make this here, make this connection over here, and then make this connection over here. You'll notice that if I start making connections, let me go back to the pointer tool here so I can just select them. If I start making these connections and I start moving things around, you'll notice that some the shapes have kind of moved a little bit with the connectors have, oops, let me control Z to undo that. You'll notice that the connectors have moved a little bit too in accordance with it and it kind of adjust. you notice that, okay, the, the, the connector here is the top and over here it's on the right, but if I moved it over here, back over here, and, or maybe way out over here, you notice that it's changed. It's no longer on the top or the right. This is what's called shape-to-shape -shape connections. Now, you may be okay with that, but if you're moving things around, you, you don't want it to like adjust to each side. You may want to create a point-to-point -point connection. So a point-to-point -point connection, it keeps its point uh, connections, basically. So let me go ahead and delete. Well, oh, actually, I don't need to delete that. I can just move this. Let me move this one. This should always be at the bottom. Let's say, let's move this one 
out first, and then we're going to move this one to the point here. So we're not moving it into the shape, we're moving it into the point here. And this one, the same thing, we want to move that to this point here. So no matter where you move it, the points are still going to be the same. Here, over on the left side, here on the bottom. I've moved over here, it still stays the same. So that's kind of a one thing to think about when you're starting to connect these shapes together, is probably once you laid out your shapes, you probably want to have uh, point to point connections. Just make them to the point, not to the shape. You can, if you glue it, gluing it to the shape, you see the whole thing turns red, but if you glue it to a point, it's just that particular point. And it'll tell you if you hover it over it a little bit, it's going, it's gluing to a connection point versus gluing it to the shape. All right. And so just depending on how you want to do it, uh, it's probably more advisable to, to glue it to the point if you wanted to uh, keep those permanent. So once you've kind of connected your shapes together, now what if you wanted to have a a shape that kind of went off off reference? Let's say that you know there's a the process that kind of will have to go to another page. Now if you click this off page reference and it goes off to another page, it, this thing comes up where you know maybe it'll create a new page and the drop off page will reference a shape on the page. Well, that's fine. And you want to insert a hyperlink. That just means that once the, you click on this, it will go to the next page. You don't have to go and click the tabs. And also, if you save this off to a PDF or an HTML, those links will be persistent. They can click on those links and it will go to the next page. So keep shape text. I'm going to describe that a little bit later. Let me go ahead and click that off. And we can click OK. And we'll show that what happens. So what happens right here is it put it, they put that shape into a new page. If I right click this and select go to the off page reference this will go back to page one's little little uh, plate little shape here and if I right click it it's going to go off to uh, page three let me go and click that again off page reference it will go to page three but it put it onto a page where it did not have the flows so that's one kind of one one thing that you have to be aware of let me go ahead and control Z to undo that uh, let me just delete this and I'll go in here and delete that. What we want to do is once we create our little off page here and it comes up, we probably want it to go into an existing page that we've created already that has the swim lanes. And so if I click on that, you'll notice now it's put it in the, well, correct page. And if I right click on that, it's going to go back to page one right here. Right. Uh, one of the things that we that we want to also be aware of is if we put text here, if I type uh, AA, right, and then I go here and type BB, and well, let's let's call this AA first. Let me go ahead and click on back here, and we'll delete. Oops, Control Z undo. Type AA. You'll notice that if I go here and I type BB, that doesn't change this here. This is still the same. Let me go ahead and control shift and then left and select that to zoom into there. AA still stays the same. That's because we didn't have that check mark uh, in the dialog box for syncing the text together. Right? So if we wanted to sync the text together, we would have to, let me go ahead and delete this. Well, let me go ahead and just select that and delete it. Let me go ahead and select this and delete it. If we created a off page reference here, that window will come up again and if we had keep shape text synchronized and I have this going to page 2 and let me just bring this in here if I type AA here and then I type AA here it's it gives it synchronizes the text if I type let me just type BB and then if I go over here you'll see that it's synchronized that so that's one thing to keep aware of if you want to synchronize the text there so let me go ahead and fit this page again go back to page one here and fit this page. So that's if you wanted to link pages together. So you can create multiple pages like that and use this off page reference link to link the pages together if the shapes go off to different processes. Now another thing I want to kind of talk about is the colors. Let's say for example we wanted to have different alternating colors for uh, the first row here and then the third row the odd rows. So a way to do that is what some people might do is maybe they select here and so they'd right click here and, and then go under here and fill it red and you notice that when they right click it here 
you fill it, nothing happens. And so what some people might do is they'll go ahead and take a, a rectangle shape and just draw it in here. They're going to draw, oh, let me see how I can draw it in here. Uh, oops, let me go ahead and click the pointer to unselect that. And then click my rectangle shape and start to draw it. So maybe they'll draw it here and then they'll fill it. They'll fill it with maybe something lighter. Right? And so what basically you've done is you just basically added another shape to there and it's covered over it. And let me go ahead and click the pointer too. And you would have to do some things like bring it to the back and so the other ones would show up. Well there's actually an easier way to do this. Oops, let me go and control Z to undo that. There's actually an easier way to do this. Uh, let me go ahead and select on that and select on this shape and press delete. What you want to do is once you click on the once you click on that specific swim lane, all you need to do is just go under shadow and then click on that. And so basically now we've got that shadow part of that swim lane done. I can multi-select now. I can select this label and just press the shift key and do a multi-select and maybe select the other row here. You can see that's lighted up, that's lighted up, and then fill that with that color. And then in this row, click on that and click on that. I think this might not work, I think, with the shadow. I think you might have to do this separately. Let me see. Yeah, you do. The multi-select on the on the shadow does not work as well. So what you need to do is you have to probably click it individually. We'll click that shadow and click this this one individually. Whoops. And then click shadow. If you want to do the whoops, let me try that again. Click on shadow. Yep. So it works well with, oh, this one is a different color, so let me go ahead and click on that fill. It works well with the labels here where you can do the multi-select and fill it out, but with the shadow for the rest of the swim lane areas, you would have to single select, do it individually. So that's adjusting colors if you wanted to kind of give some kind of differentiation for different rows for the swim lanes. So that's kind of the basics of swim lane creation and a little bit more of the tips on kind of like formatting and so I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.